Welcome everyone, make yourself comfortable, for the next couple of minutes we'll embark on a journey to the core. Thank you for joining me. Today we'll unleash the power of JUnit5. First, let's see a simple test. Fortunately, we already have one. We are implemented the test annotation for this one, and we are using two assertions. This is quite bad because if the first one fails, the second assertion won't run. Let's see this. As you can see, the second assertion should fail, but it's not even running. So let's fix this. Let's make use of the assert all method that we can even describe. And let's pass the first assertion in a lambda. And the same thing for the second assertion. If we rerun the test, we can see the failure for the first assertion as well as for the second one. And here we can see the description we gave to this group of assertion and the fact that there are two failures. If the first one gets fixed but the second one is not, we can see the failure plus only one failure is reported. Now let's cover parameterized tests. Before we can continue, we need a new dependency from the JUnit project. Now let's create a new test. We're going to receive an int, which is the amount to be set. In order to inject that, we're going to use the value source annotation. We are going to assert that an illegal argument section is strong when we set the amount of, for example, mocha phones to the given one in the value source. We are going to capture the actual section in order to assert the content of the message. Let's copy paste the message and that's it. Now you can see five tests were run for the same method. 1 for 0, minus 1, minus 10, and so on. Let's fix the name of this test, since 0 is no negative. Let's make the test fail. And we can see the assertion fails, because this is the message, but we are expecting a different message. For another kind of parameterized test, we're going to use method source. For that, let's create this new test. Here we are going to put the stuff in the inventory, and we are going to verify only the stuff we put are, in fact, in the inventory. For the parameters, we are going to use a shortcut. So if we create a, a static method called just like the test method, automatically they will be linked. We need to return a string of arguments for this to work. So that's why we are passing the arguments like this. For the fifth one, it's a list of stuff to put in the inventory, and the second one is a set of products that should be in the inventory. These names are okay, but we can do better. So, first let's introduce a new package called Utils. And inside it, we are going to create the Pascal case display name generator. Before we can continue, let's include another dependency. This time, the commons land three artifacts from Apache Commons. Now let's create a static method that will take a name in Pascal case and will convert it into a pleasant name. We use this in the three methods we are implementing from the interface. And finally, we implement the generator. Now, if we rerun the test, you can see that the class name and the method names are better displayed. Tags 
are a way to group our tests. I will turn off the logs just for you to concentrate in the tests. If we run it with Maven, 8 tests are run in total. How about if we pass the groups property with set path? Now only 5 are run. Why? Because this method with the set path tag has 5 values. How about if we introduce this expression? Also, only three because there are eight in total, minus the five from the satpad method. Now, I want to show you the report. But the name for the parameterized tests are not so great, so let's fix that. Here, we are going to use the name argument for the parameterized test annotation for giving better names to our parameterized tests. Index is the number of the tests and the placeholders like 0 or 1 are for the parameters the method is receiving in that order. Now if we rerun the test we can see that change in the report. Pretty neat, right? And we can see even the error message from the one that is failing. And now for the extra bit. First, we cover how to define the test execution order. Now we learn how to time out a computation expensive test method. Originally, it took 10 seconds, but now almost 2 seconds. Here we are asserting the test execution time for testing SLA, for example. In the first method, we wait for the computation to be done. In the second one, we don't. And finally, we cover how to run our test in parallel. By default, we set the test to run in parallel, but we can control this by class method or even test method, like in the second method. The first method will run in parallel, and the second method will run sequentially. Now it's your turn. Download the code from the link at the description and play with JUnify. Remember to share your experience in the comments, and as always, have fun. Thank you for joining me on my journey to the core. See you soon.